Hey YouTube, it's Manny. It's been almost two weeks since I've been boxed a Keychron K1, and I've been using it fairly often. A lot of people are asking for a review, so I think it's now time to give you some thoughts on it. Before we start, I'd like to mention that you can also find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash where I stream Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights starting at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I play a lot of looter shooter games and enjoy playing with viewers, but if you have any additional questions about the Keychron K1 that I don't cover in this video, then feel free to drop in during the stream and ask me. I'd be more than happy to answer anything I can. You can also hit me up in the Militia Discord server for any additional help you need. You can find the link in the description below. Since I bought this keyboard to just be like my Mac keyboard, I thought the best way to test it is to bring it to work and use it. So what I did was I unplugged it from my home PC and put it in my laptop bag. When I got to work, I noticed that one of the keycaps had fallen off. The page down key must have been hooked against something in my bag and got dislodged. Luckily, the keycap was sitting in the bottom of my bag. So I suggest getting some kind of felt cover for the keyboard if you plan on traveling with this often. I won't be, so I'm not that worried about it. But as you can see, I think the keycaps come off pretty easy. You just They just kind of pop off real easy, as you can see there. Hooking up to my Mac using Bluetooth was pretty easy. All I had to do was switch to Bluetooth, which is a switch back here. And then activate pairing by holding down the function key and the one key for three seconds. And now you can see the Bluetooth blinking. It was then displayed as an item on my Mac's Bluetooth preferences and connected right away. When I walk away with my laptop or the K1 goes to sleep, the Bluetooth connection comes back pretty quickly after a single key press. I'm not exactly sure of the battery life, but I do recommend turning off the LEDs to conserve power if you're going to use this wirelessly. Wireless was not one of the features I was looking for, and for me I prefer it didn't have Bluetooth because it would be, have been cheaper. Now I want to show you the keyboard side by side. This is a 2014 MacBook Pro. And now that I'm comparing it directly with the K1, there's a couple of things that jump out at me. First, the command key and option keys are offset slightly differently. As you can see, the command key is offset directly with the X key, and down here the Alt key, which would be the command key, is about the middle of the X key. It's not much, but it's just enough that this is causing me to mess up every time I have to hold down the command key. Not a huge deal, but still would take some time to get used to. However, I did not purchase to replace my Mac keyboard, but instead to have a keyboard that feels similar when I'm on a PC at home. I did forget to bring the Mac keycaps with me when I was at work, but it isn't a big deal since they're just for aesthetics anyway. You simply just need to switch it from Windows mode to Mac mode. That's up here. I found typing to be enjoyable. It's a bit more loose than on the Mac, and what I mean by that is the key presses take a lot less force. I do find it easier to fat finger two keys and get typos than it is on the Mac keyboard. I'm not sure if this directly answers some questions I've been getting about early key registrations, but the truth of it is, I'm not a very strong touch typist, so I make a lot of mistakes anyway. I don't feel it is any worse than any other keyboard would be for me. If I rest my hands on the keyboard, it can sometimes cause phantom keystrokes. I find this happens a lot with the space bar, since I rest both my thumbs on the keyboard a lot. Doesn't seem to be too bad, but honestly, I did expect a bit since these are low profile switches and have a lot less travel than full size switches. The keyboard also lacks a caps lock light. I didn't realize this when I bought it. I assume all keyboards have them, so it wasn't something I looked for. The 104 key version of this keyboard has one, which is located over the numpad. So I assume they probably use the same PCB for both models, and it didn't think of light placement for the smaller keyboards. How I found out it was missing was when I was typing in a password and I must have activated it by accident. I don't actually use the caps lock very often, but I do like to know when it's pressed when typing passwords. Keychron does have a workaround for this, and that's by holding the function, caps lock, and P key for six seconds. This causes the caps lock light switch LED to operate separately from the rest of the LEDs. If it is off, caps lock is not active. It is lit, then caps lock is active. Anytime the keyboard is unplugged, or you turn it to the off position, you must reactivate the caps lock override. If it's in Bluetooth mode, it stays active even when it falls asleep or loses connectivity because the device is too far away. I've only had it for about two weeks, and so far the build quality feels good. The aluminum upper and lower body gives the keyboard some weight, so it doesn't move at all when you're typing. The only issue is what I mentioned earlier about the traveling with it. It doesn't take much force to remove the keycaps. I'm a software engineer, and as I mentioned earlier, not a very good touch typist. I only average about 40 to 50 words per minute on a MacBook, so, so let's see what I can do on the K1.
I know that was terrible. I apologize, but I did get to 50 words per minute, which is my average. One last final thought is about cleaning the keyboard. If you're the type of person who eats Cheetos over your keyboard, I think you'll be happy with how easy it appears to clean the K1. Given how the body is constructed, a can of compressed air should work fine to get between the switches. Or you can remove all the keycaps and then just wipe the entire thing down. Even with all the complaints, I'm still very happy with the K1. I think it's a keeper. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you did, please hit that like button below. If you have any questions about the K1, please leave a comment below. I'll do my best to answer it. If you'd like to see more content like this, then smash that subscribe button. And as I mentioned earlier, you can also follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Mediocrity, where I stream Friday, Saturday, and Sunday evening starting at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Until next time, YouTube, take it easy.